Hello? Hello, can anybody hear me? If you can hear, please type into the chat box that you can hear me. We've got quite a few people online today. That's good. Let's see if um, if this has gone live. Um, okay. Yep, I'm here. Can you just type into the chat box if um, you can hear um, what I'm saying? <laughs> testing, testing the system, testing the sound. Usually takes a couple of seconds to catch up. That's how Hangouts on there works, I guess. Okay, awesome. Awesome, thank you, John, Matt, uh, T. Dot, uh, Ibrahim. Good morning from Wisconsin. Hey, Ibrahim. Good morning. He. Some people already. Um, some people already know our ritual. So let's get started with our little ritual. We have 31 people online, which is awesome at such short notice. Um, please tell, let me know where you're from. So just type in country or city where you're from, and um, yeah, I'll just read them out so we know what kind of uh, mix of uh, nationalities and backgrounds we have here. Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Sanjeet. I'm kind of growing a beard, so I do look a bit different. Um, I, hope <laughs> I hope it's not too bad. <laughs> All right, we've got Matt from Canada, David from UK. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> got quite a few <laughs> people from UK. Sanjeet from UK. Uh, Madi uh, Meja from South Africa. Oh my God, so many. Thomas from Copenhagen. Uh, Fahad from Pakistan, Johan from South Africa, um, Rosella from Florida, Florida, Renee from Germany. Hey, great, great that you made it, Renee. Uh, Belgium, Eric from Belgium, Mashik. I'm, I know, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Mashik from Ireland, John uh, from Canada, Timmons Canada. Cool. I'm gonna be in Canada hopefully in July, so maybe catch up. Uh, Philip from Ireland, uh, Cam Fai from Spain, Florent Duca from Kosovo. Uh, Alan can hear me now. Hey, Tim from Adelaide, good morning. It must be like really early in Adelaide right now, right? Um, well, at, at least at, as early as it is here, 6 a.m. All right, so that's awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. And we've got Mike from Stockholm, Sweden. As you can see, we've got people from all over the world. I'm, I'm really uh, happy we've got. Um, uh, everybody could make it or as many people as uh, could actually made it and oh Alan we've got Alan from the US all right so we're going to kick this webinar off it's going to be very um, technical so hi Joseph from New York uh, Tim 530 Adelaide That's the thing about Adelaide guys just just a brief note like it's how, how is it 530 in Adelaide right Tim it's because it's six here and then so it's like half an hour difference if if I'm not mistaking that anyway we're getting sidetracked um a very technical webinar kill four so it's like expected that you have some knowledge of mkill four if you don't still sit around you can have a look listen and then you'll get the replay and you can always uh, check it out again later uh, we're going to be talking about a custom function and how it works uh, on um in mkill four how you can use it to access different types of indicators we're also going to talk a bit about um, the other inbuilt indicator indicator querying functions that MQL4 has, and you know when you should use which, why you should sometimes use a custom, why you should sometimes use the other ones. It's, it's pretty straightforward, actually. And um, uh, but before we get started, as always, we're going to have a look at the disclaimer. So let me let me understand how to share my screen with you. Um, okay, I think it's this screen that I need to share. All right, so you should see a beautiful photo of Elon Musk right now. And let me bring up this disclaimer. So um, do you see that? Um, that's this um, thing took up. All right, there you go. You should see the disclaimer now. Um, and so just quickly read through it or have a look at it. It should be displayed for five seconds at least. Uh, basically, everything we're talking about is for educational purposes only. Um, this is not uh, personal or financial advice. It's all general advice, just you know, to get you up to speed with how the forex market works, what programming is, and stuff like that. 
Uh, read through the disclaimer if you agree. Then we're going to proceed to the webinar. It's um, Forex Boat, a trading academy webinar number five. Let's get started. All right. So you can see my screen, and we're going to keep it that way for now. Um, I'm going to bring up. I'm going to bring up MetaTrader Four. All right. So I've already done a little bit of thing around here. I'm just going to close that. And we're gonna get straight into it, right? So no, no, no wasting of time. We're gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna close a couple of windows here, and um, yeah, I'm just watching what's going on with the Australian dollar. It's it's pretty, you know, intense. Like because I live in Australia, so it's important for me what's going on uh, with this currency overall, not just for trading. And yeah, so now we're going to proceed to MQL4. So to get to MQL4, there's this button over here. Uh, whoops. And I have it open here in a separate window. So that's our MQL4. And um, I've got a couple of indicators open here. Nothing nothing too exciting. I've increased the font, so hopefully you should uh, see the font pretty well. Just shout out into the chat if you can't see it well, uh, like if you're having problems seeing it. And if there's like a lot of people that can't see it, then we might have to do something about it. But this is pretty much the maximum size I could get. And it's pretty dark, so it should be visible. All right, so we're going to be talking about the iCustom indicator. What does it do and like what is it what is it for in the first place? Well, here on the left, you can see that we've got experts, right? So those are um, Forex robots, basically, that, that actually trade the market. And then we've got indicators. Our indicators are um basically tools that allow you to analyze the market better right so let's have a look at a couple of indicators I'm, I'm sure you guys all know what indicators are but at the same time let's just let's just bring some up so like if i go into my uh, navigator and then i go for let's say something um like i've got the super smoother here but that's we'll talk about that a bit later um, let's look at trend indicators and then we like the most basic indicator, the moving average, right? So there's a moving average of period 80. So what does it do? It, it aggregates, somehow aggregates the price and puts it into this line and then it allows you to analyze it. So basically it doesn't give you any new information. It's not like a magic wand that pulls information out of thin air and that just gets uh somehow gets access to information that you otherwise can't see in your terminal no that's not true like all of these indicators they're basically working with the same information you can see on your screen you can see open high uh open high low and close in your bars so let's change these to bars you can see like four prices on, on every bar you can see four prices yes there's also tick information tick data uh, but it also comes in um, like it comes in as a bid and ask price and also you have volume so if you right click and click here volume so volumes is basically the number of ticks that uh, appeared or that came into the terminal in that specific uh, period of time so basically indicators they just work with all that same information they just aggregate it for you better they're aggregators of information or modifiers of information uh, so if anything the information you see on the chart is way more granular than the information you see in the indicator um, so here's another one, parabolic SAR, just adds these green dots, which actually can be a bit, um, get in your, in your way. Uh, there's some complex indicators like Ishimoku, Kinko, Hyo, right? If I'm pronouncing it right, I used to love it when I was just starting out into forex trading. It's, it's so, <laughs> it looks so complicated. And at the same time, uh, yeah, it, it like, it's got some pretty interesting methodologies around it. So all of these are indicators and in, we can access them in, how do I get rid of it now? There we go. Um, we can access them in our terminal, so we can use them to make decisions. So like maybe sometimes here, you'll say the price is above the moving average, so it's an upward trend. Price is below, so it's a downward trend, so you can see that kind of stuff. Um, and then the price, price bounces off, price bounces off, so you can use it as a support resistance line. We can use it in trading, but uh, my general mentality or philosophy around uh, programming and algorithmic trading is that anything that you can actually use in trading manually you can code into your algorithmic trading system so if you can use an indicator here there's nothing from stopping you from using it in your terminal I mean in your MQL4 <laughs> language of course so that's exactly what we're going to be looking at and 
um, we're going to be trying to understand how to do that best. All right, so if you're following along, then follow along. If you're not, then uh, just uh, let's uh, get started, I guess. Um, we're going to create a new indicator, create new document. No, not indicator, expert advisor. So make sure you select expert advisor template. And this one I'm going to call webinar uh, five and then underscore version one. So by the way, a quick tip, versioning is very important in expert advisors and indicators. When you create stuff, like I, I actually usually go version 1.0 and then I increase it to 1.2 and so on. And when if I make a major change, I go to 2.0 and then 2.1 and 2.0 and so on. So let's go, let's do exactly that. Webinar five, version 1.0. Um, then click next. So don't don't bother about any parameters. Click next. Don't change anything here. Next, next, finish. So this is going to be our like kind of test dummy. This is going to be our test indicator that we're going to be uh, working with. Uh, test expert advisor that we're going to be working with just for the pur purposes of practice. So yeah, everything we're doing once again is for education, educational use only. All right. So now let's. Um, Let's get rid of everything except for the last part, which is on tick, because we don't really need any of that right now. And then we can get rid of these comments as well. All right, so there's our on tick function. And actually, I like moving these backwards. So to move them backwards, click, click Shift Tab. And by the way, um, by the way, this uh, webinar is um, is the first one we're having on MQL4, and like I specifically chose a, a topic that is just like standalone topic. Uh, I custom function and so it'll be interesting to see how you guys like it or not and if you if you enjoy this webinar um, we'll we might have more webinars on MQL4 because you know I'm, I'm trying to do as many different topics as possible but you know I like MQL4 and maybe we should have a couple more of these all right so uh, on tick this is the function where we're going to code everything that we need for uh, our analysis everything that's going to be happening like as ticks come into the terminal, th these things are going to be happening, right? So for instance, uh, you guys might already know, if I type in alert uh, and then I say hello here, or hello world, or one of our first programs, what will happen is you know, every, every tick that appears, we're gonna get this message, hello world, right? Uh, of course, <laughs> been doing too much R programming recently. Semicolon expected in C type languages. So if we go back to MetaTrader 4, and if we now look at da, 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 on the left here, expert advisors, just click refresh. And that's actually a new, a cool feature they introduced in like about a year ago, two years ago, um, before it wasn't available. All right, so in MQ4, you, you'll see webinar five version 1.0. Let's just delete this one because that was one of the ones I was testing out. Um, version five, 1.0, and so, like as long as we're getting ticks, receiving ticks into terminal, if I run this, click OK, um, of course we need to switch auto trading on, you'll see that you know me these messages are coming up, right? <laughs> okay, there's always a bit too many, so um, we want to remove the expert advisor. Um, now, the other thing is just make sure you're on a demo account, just in case, but I think we're not going to be doing much uh, trading or we're not going to be doing much work on, on the actual account. We're going to be using the tester mostly. And that's the other thing I wanted to show you with this indicator. So if I go to the strategy tester now, um, by the way, like I'm, I, once again, I'm assuming that you know how to launch expert advisors, you know how to use the strategy tester a little bit because we're going to need that kind of stuff for, for today. Um, all right, so strategy tester. If I go to the strategy tester and then I find my expert advisor here, webinar five version 1.0, and then euro dollar, one hourly time frame. let's maybe slow it down a little bit. Then I set the date, so like the past week, and then I uh, start this optimization. You see like nothing is happening, right? No alerts are coming up, why is that? Where, where are all the alerts? Well, because uh, MetaTrader 4 is smart, it cuts the alerts uh, in uh, testing because otherwise you'd get flooded with them. But if you go to the journal over here, you will see that they're coming up here. And as you can see, with every single tick, you get a hello world. So I'm gonna actually slow this right down. So we get like very few ticks and then I'm gonna clear this, right click, clear all journals. And you'll see that with every tick, as the chart moves, we get a new, uh, a new alert. All right, so that's how we're going to be testing expert advisors. 
And that's kind of like the start of our tutorial for today. This is like the basis. If you're you know, just typing in some code, or we want to test it out. You usually don't test it out on the chart right away. Uh, test it out in expert advisor. So you need to know the differences, what happens differently. And so this basically alert is working like a print. And uh, prints, prints are alerts which don't pop up. They just get printed here. So you can use print function instead if you want. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing. And then like, we're going to be using different um, functions and we're going to be seeing how they work here. All right, so hopefully that all makes sense. Now let's proceed to our code. All right, so comment that out and let's get started. Uh, we're going to start by looking at the other type of functions there are. So today we're talking about, today we're talking about uh, built, so one is going to be built in indicator call functions. And two is the I custom, uh, let's, let's do it properly, function, right? So what is the difference? What, what uh, why are we talking about every, everything, um, why are we talking about these two different uh, options? Um, so built-in indicator call functions. So you see that there on the left, there are some indicators that are built into MetaTrader 4 like the moving average that we just worked with, right? Then we've got uh, the ATR, we've got the alligator, we've got RSI, stochastic, bears, CCI, pretty much all of them that you see here, they're considered built-in indicators because they come pre-packaged with MetaTrader 4. And what Meta, what the MQL4 or MetaCodes guys have done is conveniently supplied these indicators with corresponding functions in MQL4. So I'll give you an example. So we have an indicator, which is called the moving average, which we've just looked at, right? So it's built into Meta4. It comes pre-packaged with your platform. You don't have to download it from anywhere. You don't have to create it yourself. It's right there and there, and you can use it. So what they do is they add into Meta4 a function, a corresponding function. Let's just put it right here, which is called I capital M A. But that function corresponds to the moving average. And let's have a look at I M A. You see it comes, it pops up and then I can, it even has like a help, like this uh, tool tip that pops up. So when I want to use it, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight I M A and click F1 on your keyboard. That will bring up the reference. So you might have to download it. So if you're, um, uh, manual is not up to date. You might have to download it. It'll, it'll prompt you to do that. But otherwise, it brings you up this function. So as you can see, it's a built-in function. And what it allows you to do is it calculates the moving average indicator and returns its value. So that's what we're going to be using um, for the built-in functions. And then I custom this other function that we're going to talk about, that is for all the non-built-in indicators. So whenever you cannot choose one of these, then you re resort to I custom because I custom can actually, that's why it's called I custom. It, it allows you to access custom indicators that you have uh, put into the platform yourself or that you have created yourself which are not accounted for in these uh, functions. So we're going to start by learning about uh, these uh, built-in functions and we're going to practice a couple. So let's start with the IMA. I'm going to uh, create some variables. So we're going to create a variable called double MA um, current. And uh, we're going to, so that's the current value of the moving average and it's going to be a double type of variable. So we're going to, finish this line. So this is our initialization of the variable. And now we're going to actually, uh, um, now we're going to actually type in the call for the function. I'm just, I'm just looking at the chat, uh, Florence saying that the screen has gone a bit blurry. Um, just give it a second or maybe try um, somehow refreshing it or checking your internet connection if that's happening. But yeah, guys, if uh, if that happens and if there's if it's happening to many of you, then that means there's some problem on my side. But otherwise, if it's just sometimes, occasionally, then it should go away. So hopefully it'll get better, Florent. All right, so double MA current. We're going to call this function IMA. <laughs> Sounds like an abbreviation for uh, a government organization, IMA. Like, IRS or something like that. 
um, IMA. And what, what do we need here? So usually if I, if I don't have the tooltip, then I just delete this bracket and then I uh, place, it, place it back and then I get the tooltip again, which is convenient. And so constant string symbol, that is the symbol or the currency pair that you want to call the indicator on. You know how when you're in MetaTrader 4, we're going to be jumping back and forth, guys, so um, <laughs> prepare yourself for that. You know when you're in MetaTrader 4 and you take moving average and you attach it to a chart? Oh, that's, uh, that's not the indicator. Um, whoops, uh, you take the moving average, you attach it to a chart. Well, what you're doing is you're not just dragging it onto your screen, you're dragging it onto a chart which has a currency pair and has a period. So that's exactly, so you're selecting which currency pair, pair and period to apply. If I change the chart and if I change the period, then of course uh, the values of the moving average will change because the inputs are different. So basically here you need to tell the IMA same thing. Which chart am I going to be applying it to? It's going to be, let's say, Euro US dollar, for instance. And then uh, the time frame, right? So you can type in a time frame here. And if uh, if we go to the help, I'll just show you how uh, how these time frames come to be. So if you go to here, you can see which ones are which. So period, current. We'll get to that in a second. Um, period M one, period M five. M15, so they have words, IDs. You can type in an ID, so I can type in period M30 here, and it will recognize it, so you can see it's a different color. It's not black, because that's a keyword in MQL4. Or you can actually just type in the value, because there's a corresponding value. So we won't get into too much detail on that. Um, that's basically just a, uh, the, this is the main, the main part, but then they make it convenient through these keywords. But what you normally do is, you normally want the expert advisor or you want the value of the IMA of the on the same chart as the expert advisor is working, right? So you don't want to go to Euro dollar if you're working on Australian dollar or um, Euro CAD or something like that. So usually what you do is you just type in symbol here. And what that does is this brings you the symbol that you're currently working on. And period M30, same thing, you just type in period. Right, so this is by far the most commonly used template. So indicator name and then symbol period right away because that's what you're working on. That's what the expert advisor is working on. That makes it very versatile. So if you drag the expert advisor on a different currency pair and different, uh, or you change the period, then your this IMA function adjusts as well. All right, so what are we up to here? So I'm, I'm actually gonna go back here. We've done symbol, time frame, and now we need MA period. So don't get these confused. There is two, dive, two types of periods in these functions. Symbol is the currency pair, and then you've got period, which is a time frame of the chart, and then you've got period of the indicator. You know, like you can have a 10 bar moving average, you can have a 20 bar moving average, you can have a 100 bar moving average. So we're gonna have an 80 bar moving average, MA shift. So now we, we're kind of proceeding after these two, and this is important to remember, after we've done these two, we're proceeding on to the, um, parameters of the, the actual parameters of the moving average. So you can see period, shift for the moving average. Oh, I hate uh, that when that pop-up disappears. <laughs> Why does it disappear? All right, uh, moving, moving average shift zero. We don't want any shift in the moving average. Uh, moving average method, what, pri um, what kind of moving average? There's gonna be a simple moving average, exponential moving average, a weighted moving average, and so on. So once again, in these cases, you need the help to understand what you need to put in there. So, bum, 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 method. So there you go. The sim simple, excuse me, simple moving average is a zero, or you can type in this word, exponential moving average is a one, or you can type in this word, smoothed is a two, or this word, and linear weighted this, or this word. I'll just show you the same stuff in, um, let's get rid of these lines. Um, delete. Delete. Uh, same thing in uh, uh, MetaTrader 4. So if I take the moving average and there's the period, there's the type of moving average method. That's an expert. So there's a period, then we've specified shift to zero moving average method. As you can see, there's four of them here. So that's a one, that's a two, that's a three, that's a four. Apply to, that's the price you want to apply to. That's going to be the next parameter we specify. So these are the main parameters of the moving average. And like that kind of puts it into perspective what's going on in the background of 
uh, MetaTrader 4, right? So here, when you've been using moving average, you specify a period, a shift, a, a method, apply to, and so on. But you can also do all of that programmatically. How cool is that, right? So when I go here, I've done 80, 0. Now, where am I up to? Oh, by the way, another another way of bringing up this tooltip is you just delete the, the last comma, put the comma, and the tooltips back up. So moving average method, we agreed we're going to do uh, simple. Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, use a simple moving average. It's a zero, and applied price is going to be, um, let's have a look at that as well. What are we going to do for a, uh, applied price? Uh, applied price. Da -da -dum. All right, price close. That's the one we want, of course, price close. And then you can see there's other ones here as well. So price closed. All right, and then shift. Shift is, um, w this is another important parameter. So we're, we're back out of the moving average parameters. These were the moving average parameters, and now this is a parameter of um, just general parameter. Um, what the shift does is it allows you to see which bar you want the moving average for. So let's go back into MetaTrader 4. Um, so that is the current bar, which has uh, the shift of 0. This bar has a shift of 1, shift of 2, shift of 3, shift of 4. So if I pull a moving average here, and I put it on the chart, which value do I want? Do I want the value that it had here? Do I want the value it had here? Do I want the value it had here? Do I want the value it had here? Which bar do I want the value on? And so basically, you'll, you can specify. And if you specify shift 0, then it'll give you the current value, so the changing value. For any other shifts, for the moving average, the value will be fixed because it doesn't change, it doesn't redraw. But the current value redraws, so be careful of that. If you specify shift 0, what we, which we are going to do, you will get the changing current value. All right, so there we go. That's MA current, and we're going to um, print or alert MA oops, current. So let's compile that, and let's give that a go. All right, I'm going to go back, and we're going to now uh, run this test again. So there's our... Uh, expert advisor, it's in there. So if I start this, give it a second, and I go to journal, you'll see that we're getting these values one by one. And what I want to do is I want to put the moving average in here. And the parameters, make sure the parameters are exactly the same. If you're just, just testing things out, 80, 0, simple, close, click OK. And so if I zoom in, you will see that, let's just pause it for a second. So let's pause it there. So the last value, we got 1.124038. And if I look at this, if I put my mouse over here, it's 1.12404 because it rounded it. It rounded it up from 0, 38 to 4. All right, so that's that's uh, how we use the IMA. And just you know, to prove a point, we can uh, give it some more time. Actually, that was very quick. <laughs> Oops, uh, because there's no expert advisor working in the background. It just went through the whole week in a second. Uh, but anyway, we can look at this last value here. And you can see it's 1.11728, 1.11727. Um, so there we go. That's how the IMA function works. And that's basically how all of these functions work. So let's go back here. So you will have the symbol you need to apply it to the period, which usually just specifies symbol and period. Then you've got some number of parameters of the indicator. And then you've got the last one, which is the shift. Um, OK, I'm going to look at the questions for a second here, just so that we know what's going on. Uh, because some people have been typing some stuff here. Um, OK, somebody said the screen was too blurry. And then somebody else, Johan, uh, went to and watch this through YouTube rather than through Webinar Jam. And how do you, how do you do that? You click, uh, Sebastian says, just click on the YouTube logo. So if your screen is blurry, try doing that. Click on the YouTube logo. Um, the other one is try and use the reconnect button down below. Screen will be better. Thanks, Malik, for that uh, tip. And thanks for Sebastian for the YouTube logo tip. Um, 
So there's two ways to improve, improve um, visibility if your screen is blurry. Uh, Sanjeet, what are you doing in EA now can also be done in an indicator, right? Is there any reason why you choose to demo this in an, in an EA? Oh, uh, that's a good uh, question, Sanjeet. Um, yes, you're right. You can still do that in an indicator. Why I chose to demo it in an EA is because EAs are simpler. Because EAs are just basically, you can see, I'm, I just need this on tick function. I don't need to worry about buffers. I don't need to worry about um, all those other sorts of things that happen in indicators. And you also probably have noticed. Thanks, Sebastian. Uh, you probably probably have also noticed that even in my courses, most of the time I deal with expert advisors or or scripts, right? But scripts in this case, the script wouldn't work for us because we want to see ongoing results rather than just a one-off. With uh, expert and in uh, course in my courses, I work with uh, expert advisors mostly because indicators have their own layer of complexity that you have to overcome before you can actually understand what's going on and. I, I don't want to spend half the webinar on just explaining how indicators work. It'll actually take much longer than that. But don't worry. Um, you know, if if we get into these webinars on programming, then we'll definitely discuss indicators at some point and have uh, maybe a few dedicated to that to those topics. But for now, we're focusing on the um, IMA and other type of functions, and definitely you can do the same through indicators as well. All right, so just I'm going to show you. Uh, we're not going to go into detail on the other ones. Uh, we we might on one of them maybe, but I'm just for now. I'm going to show you a couple of other built-in indicator functions like that, so you can get the hang of it. All right, so let's say what what else do we have? We have I RSI, right, for the relative strength indicator. Uh, then we have Another one, iMacD, all these popular ones. Then we have the, you see it's it's black in color when I'm typing and then it turns green. That means it actually exists. Um, what else do we have? iStock, iStochastic. Um, what else would you want to use? iATR, average to range, popular one, because ATR, as you might uh, know from I think I, I had this. I have discussed this somewhere that using the average to range as the um, using the average to range as the dynamic stop loss is quite popular in programming. Then I parabolic. Whoops, I guess not. Uh, um, another popular one. Another one I like is alligator. I alligator and why I like it actually let's do this one this is a good example so as you can see there's lots of them and you can always just click F1 uh, and then if you're interested in a certain indicator you can just go look for it here for on search and then you'll be able to find those indicators and yeah so they, they've got like a whole um, list here if you go into contents technical indicators and you can see them here IAC IAD ADX alligator and so on bands bands on array and so on there's lots of lots of different um, indicators that you can use here so why we're going to look at the alligator is because it will put into perspective what we're talking about here so that these are the parameters of the indicator of the actual indicator and these never change these first two and the last one never change so let's have a quick look at the alligator so alligator current it's or let's say just for interest sake we'll say alligator underscore underscore one meaning not the current so this could have been ma current or ma underscore zero because we're looking at it on the current bar we're going to look at the alligator on the first bar so meaning the bar first one to the left of the current one and now we're going to call the I alligator function, and you're going to be shocked at how many parameters you need to pass, right? How insane is that? So same thing. We're just going to actually say symbol, period, and then we're going to say jaw period, jaw shift, teeth period, teeth shift, lips period, lips shift, and then method, uh, MA method, uh, applied price, and then mode and then shift so all those parameters and why well because if I go to back here and I call the alligator where is the alligator um, okay that's a good one Bill Williams has his own, <laughs> has his own folder all right alligator 
So you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? That means we're gonna have to specify eight parameters here. So let's just specify the same ones we here you see here. 13, 8, 8, 5, 5, 3, right? Fibonacci numbers. 13, 8, 8, 5, 5, 3, right? So what is that? Jaw, teeth, uh, lips. Just making sure that it's the same. Jaw, teeth, lips. Okay. Then what do we want? Uh, method. So we want smoothed because it's smoothed here and Median HL divided by two. Oh, that's a good practice. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up the help uh, because even I don't remember these numbers. So method, we want the smoothed one. So you can just put a two, or we can put this value. We're gonna put the value, and then let's go back to the help, and here we're gonna say applied price. Uh, which one? H plus L over two, that's the one they use, the median price, right? Yep, that's the one they used. So you can either put a four in there or price median. It's exactly the same, It'll be, results will be exactly the same. And then mode, okay, so now we want the mode. Interesting, okay, what does mode do? So mode, data source identifier of the indicator line, it can be any of the following values. Okay, so the mode, this is another interesting one. Here, as you saw, we only had eight parameters in the actual indicator, and we're done with them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, now, what is this mode? Well, the mode is because the indicator has a couple of lines. So let's go back here. You'll see that the indicator has not just one line like the moving average, but if I run the alligator, and let's just make this much thicker so we can see well. Okay, and then uh, grid off. So you can see that this indicator, and I'm gonna get rid of the moving average for now, this indicator has a couple of lines, and which, so which one do you want? Which result do you want? Do you want this one? Do you want this one? Do you want this one? Which value do you want? Let's say we want the, um, let's say we want the lips, right? So how do we get to the lips? Dun, dun, dun. How do you get to the lips? The green line, the balance, green lips line, balance line. So you just need to use this code, mode gator lips. Put that in there. And then finally we get to shift on which bar do you want it? So we are saying alligator one, we want it on the first bar. And actually we're gonna say alligator lips one. All right, so there we go, Quite looks quite complex. Now we're going to just print that out alert, use that, then if we don't want any errors, whoa, if we don't want any errors, we have to comment all this out, so let's, um, um, where is my star, uh, give me a second, this, there we go, this was, that's embarrassing, <laughs> I've been coding in R so much lately that they don't have these multi-line comments, Oh yeah, um, there we go, alligator lips, compile. Uh, yeah, we need to declare it, so you can declare it right here if you want, like that, or for consistency's sake, we're going to declare it separately. There we go, so if I run this. Um, okay, now I can go back to the terminal, I can have a look. Uh, settings. Let's start this again, but let's put the speed down. All right. By the way, you see how this grid is coming up? It's it's not the best, right? You don't like the grid. You, t you remove the grid, and then you stop, and then you start again. It comes up again, right? How do you get rid of it? So I'll show you a quick trick like now, right now. So um, just open a new chart, get rid of the grid. As you can see, my new charts don't have a grid. Well, we talked about this in the MetaTrader 4 course, and I gave you a secret hack to do that. I'll just give you another hack now for the tester. You go into template, save template, so you don't have the grid, and then you call this template a secret hack word, which is called um, tester. If you create a template with the name tester, save, then every time you run the tester, you can see it'll be exactly the same. It won't have that grid. 
So there's a there's an extra <laughs> extra hack over and above for you to take away today. All right, so there's something is going on. Let's put the speed down. Let's go to the journal. Let's clear all these journals and let's put an alligator on here. Click OK. Zoom in. All right, they're kind of intertwined, so I'm just going to give it some some maybe room to move a little bit away, right? So then we can, okay, that's good enough. All right, so if I look at the journal, I clear all journals, which you will see here. Give it a second. You will see that a value has appeared, right? And this is actually the value of the green line on this bar, right? So here you can see that if I bring it over, it's one, come on, uh, 1.12252. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, 1.225516. Uh, so that's 1.12252. 1 and you can see that the value isn't changing. Can you tell me why that is? Can you guess why is the value not changing? Why the ticks are coming, but the value is always the same. Why is that? Can anybody can anybody guess? Type it into the into the chat if you if you know the answer. You're welcome for the hack, Hicham. Oh, Hicham. So, any takers? What is the reason why the value is not changing here? I'm gonna answer a question while I'm waiting. Uh, Vitaly is asking, "Hi, have you tried to execute Monte Carlo method on EA?" Uh, good question. Um, good question. Dun, 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 dun. No, I have. I haven't tried. I've done something similar in R, but Monte Carlo method in its original form. No, I haven't done. It. Correct, Matt. Thank you very much. The because we said bar one, and as you can see now, we've got a new bar, and now it's giving us the value on this bar on the because this has become the zero bar. This has become the bar one. And so now it's giving us the value on this bar. And exactly, thank you, John. Bar one is the same bar all the time until a new bar appears. So this is a different approach, and that's why it's important to understand what or remember or know what you're specifying here at the end over here. Is it the one or is it anything else? So if you specify zero, then it will change all the time because it's the current value. If you specify one, two, three, or four, or five, and so on, if the indicator doesn't doesn't redraw its past values, the the value you see won't change. All right, so we're going good. Uh, we've done two indicators, and now we're going to finally move on to iCustom. And it's it, as you'll see, it's going to be pretty uh, easy, simple stuff because we have already learned so much, and iCustom is very similar to these two as well. So now let's move on to iCustom. All right, we're going to say, I've got an indicator here, super smoother, super smoother. It's an indicator we've talked about a couple times in here and there. And if you are in one of the previous webinars, you have that indicator. If you weren't, then I will show you where you can get it. Um, give me a second, I will bring that page up. All right, there we go. So basically, you just need to go to uh, forexboat.com slash bonus. And if you go here, hey, Renee, there's your comment. Awesome. Um, if you go to this page, so I've changed it a bit uh, from the last time, you get the indicator and you get a template inside as well. Uh, you won't get the other bonuses that were available in that other uh, course that we launched. But at the same time, you can get this indicator because we need it for this webinar. So go ahead and download it. Just remember that it falls under the same disclaimer that it's only for educational purposes. And uh, if you use it on real account, you're doing it so at your own risk. Uh, but otherwise, you can go ahead and download it here. I'm going to show you how to use the iCustom and using that indicator as an example. So let's say double. Double uh, super smoother, and we're going to say one. So we want super smoother one to be equal to, and I have this indicator super smoother, right? If I go to MetaTrader 4 and I get rid of uh, this alligator, 
oh, by the way, watch what happens. When I stop the test, watch what happens. You see? And the new alligator has appeared because when you can you can switch that off programmatically, but what happens is uh, you were testing an expert advisor who's using an indicator. It will put up that indicator at the end of the test on the chart. All right. So what I want to do is I want to look at the super smoother. I want to drag it onto the chart, and here just make sure that the line is wide so we can see it. And there it is. So you can see the indicator. It's kind of like still green. So I'm just gonna make it like deep pink. So there's a super smoother and it's uh, it's a great indicator. Watch watch one of the webinar replays for the past webinars. It's much better than the moving average. Uh, and as you can see what parameters does it have? It has two parameters, an attenuation period and shift. So we can expect that we'll have two parameters, but the thing is if I try something like I super smoother, it doesn't exist, right? It's not there because this indicator I created myself, I put it into the MetaTrader 4 terminal, it's it's not something that came prepackaged. So what can I do here? Well, in these cases, you need to use iCustom. And it's going to work exactly the same way as we saw here. So here we're going to open the bracket, whoop, uh, constant string symbol. So the same thing, symbol is where you want to apply it. Nothing changes here. Comma, time frame, period, same thing. We want to apply it on the same period as the indicator, as the expert advisor's run. And now comes the funny stuff. So here you got a constant string name, which we never had before. What is a string name? What is this name for? Well, that's the name of the indicator that you want to run. And in this case, we want to run the super smoother. So we're going to say in quotation marks, super smoother. And so just make sure you're typing in exactly the same name as you see here. Don't use, don't worry about the MQL4 stuff on the back. Um, just the same name. And if you're having trouble, then maybe make sure that the name is one word and get out rid of any dots or any like other symbols that might be in the name because that might be causing some issues. Like say if your indicator has a um, something you might uh, see like it has a Russian name or has a has a hashtag in it or something that might be causing problems. Not necessarily it will, but um, like there's so many moving parts that just a simple name can sometimes uh, make make things work better. All right, so super smoother. And then here, another interesting thing. We've got like dot, dot, dot. I'm um, not sure if you can see it that well, but basically it just says instead of more parameters, it just says dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and what does that dot, dot, dot mean? Well, that means that, uh, hey, trader or programmer or coder, uh, look, you're using a custom indicator. We have no idea how many parameters it takes. It could take four. It could take eight, like the... Uh, alligator it could take a hundred so it's up to you it's the onus is on you to find out how many parameters it takes and pass those parameters correctly and by the way don't forget that one or zero that shift at the end so which will tell us where you how far away you want that indicator so on what bar you want that indicator so that's how it works all right so how we're going to do this we're going to go back to here and we'll say okay 10 and 0 so in that order we need to pass these parameters so we're going to say 10 0 and then finally um, here we just need to say the shift so let's say we want the value of the indicator on the current on oh, no we were saying on the first bar so we're going to say on the first bar there we go call a semicolon so compile no warnings usually um, if if the indicator isn't there, let's say let's say if I just say super smoother ZZ, what happens then? Okay, you don't get a warning as well, but then you will have a problem when you're running the code. So be careful of that. That's that's a uh, inherent risk of MQL4. So there we go, super smoother one. Are we ready to test this out? Yes, we are. We just need to alert it out. Super smoother one. All that. Go back to the terminal. Let's see how this goes. All right, we're gonna start. And we're going to put the super smoother onto the chart with this, uh, these values. Uh, the other thing is, uh, where's our pink? Deep pink. Who comes up with names like that? Anyway, here it is. And let's have a look. So I'm going to clear all journals because we've got some old ones there. Waiting for a tick. Give us a tick. There's a tick. All right, so 1.121594. And let's look at the value here. 1.12159 you see so it rounded it down and that's exactly what we wanted we're getting the value of this custom indicator 
on our chart. Why is it so thin? There you go. We're getting the cust the value of this custom indicator. So, you know, if I, I speed it up a little, then you'll see. So that's um, okay. Nine eight. Oh, sorry. One point one two one six five on here, and then you'll see one. 0.12166 because it rounded it. So basically, we're accessing values of this custom indicator through a function called iCustom, right? And instead of these other ways. And by the way, you could still use iCustom with, with moving average. You could say moving average here. Or with the alligator, you could say alligator here. It's just that these are more convenient because they're tailored. They're specific to these indicators. And that's how you use the iCustom function. Um, Probably the only other thing is uh, you'd have to kind of consider is if your function, if your uh, indicator has a couple of lines like the gator, then don't forget that you would need to specify another parameter here. But uh, when you get to that stage, when you're coding indicators like that, just make sure to uh, research that. And uh, we're not going to go through that right now. And uh, just make sure to research that and do it properly. All right, so that is everything I wanted to tell you today and what are we on in terms of time it is 6 54 a.m here which means we still have about five minutes awesome all right so hopefully you enjoyed that throw in any questions we're moving on to the q a throw your questions into the chat if you have any of them that you want to discuss uh, i'm gonna switch um switch my screen share there we go amazing so that was fun, right? All right, and we're gonna run a poll while you're putting your questions in. Let's see. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. All right. Um, ta -ta. So, what are we gonna ask? Uh, first question: Have you used iCustom before? Uh, start poll. Just two answers: Yes, no. Please put in your answers. All right, and I'm gonna read some. Uh, questions for now. I used I custom functions, but I have noticed with custom function indicators, arrows, or discrete signals such as arrows that sometimes the arrows do not, excuse me, update on the chart, especially in fourteen bars. Um, it, it is as if the indicator is not refreshing on the chart when I detach the. Uh, I think it could be an indicator problem. So especially with discrete indicators, you got to be careful. They they use sign uh, MQL for the histograms, and so sometimes you got to compare to zero. Sometimes the zero is not a zero. What you'll find is the zero is wasn't defined properly by the creator of the indicator, and it's like minus two, two hundred seventy four two thousand two million seven hundred. Like, so some ridiculous value, and that could be messing with your uh, algorithm. So check the indicator. What is the function of the super smoother? Eric, um, I would love to tell you about it, but uh, you would need to watch one of the replays of the previous webinars. We talked a lot about the super smoother. So uh, just have a look. If you're asking about how the super smoother works, then just have a look at the previous webinars. All right, so have you ever used iCustom before? Yes, 29% and no, 71%. Awesome, okay. Uh, that's that's good. So a lot of people learned something new today. So now we're going to do a new poll. Let's give it a second. Uh, ba -ba 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 -bum. So let's get let's say create. Did you learn at least one new thing today? Let's see. Yes. No. Let's see if there was anybody who didn't learn anything, which is fine. If you didn't learn anything, it's totally fine, which means the webinar wasn't technical enough. So just let me know if you learned at least one new thing. And don't forget about the tips. Don't forget about the little hacks that I was throwing in. Um, all right. Any more questions? Guys, this is your chance to ask any MQL questions. Uh, not any, but you know, related MQL questions that have been bothering you. We don't have MQL4 webinars often. Awesome. Everybody learned at least one new thing today. Oh, no, wait, hold on. There's there's at least a couple of people that haven't. That's okay. That's totally fine. I'm glad we have uh, very advanced users in our community. And uh, yeah, it'll be really cool when uh, when we launch all the community features of Forexpo and then you guys can help each other out. That's awesome. And 
finally, finally, uh, my favorite question. Thank you for answering it. My favorite question, or the question I dread so much. How would you rate uh, this webinar on a scale from one to five, with one being the lowest and five being the highest? Uh, hit me. Tell me what you thought about today and how we go. Um, Joanne had a question. Why not declare double in general area? Why declare on every tick? Good, uh, good question. How do I answer this? So, you're technically not declaring it on every tick. Like I'm kill for smart. It's not. It's not. Well, no. You you probably are. Like if you declare in a general area, it's a different type of variable. It becomes a global var variable, and it doesn't refresh. So the memory is allocated to it, and it will stay there for a very long time. And then you know you put new stuff in there. You don't put new stuff. It'll just stay there, and it's like something that MQL4 uh, can always reference. And it, they have a different reason, the different meaning. When you declare a variable in uh, in your function on tick, it uh, like in, in terms of programmatically, it, it appears in the stack, right? Yeah, exactly. Ma Mashik is saying globals are even it appears in the stack. You know, does it function and then it gets out of the stack. Out in, out in, out. It's just it's just the way it is. That's uh, it's doesn't use. Uh, it's not that it makes uh, the code less efficient. I think it makes it more efficient. Uh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> you need we need to research that. All right, polls. How are we going there? Uh, Sixty-eight percent five. Uh, Twenty-six percent four. And percent three. No twos. Uh, ones today. Nice. Thank you very much. I'm excited. Seventy-seven percent of you think this is a five-star webinar and. 30% of you think it's a four-star webinar. I'm glad uh, we had a good uh, day today. And well, some of you had a good evening and <laughs> I had a good morning. And, uh, get started with my day. It's exactly 7 o'clock. Thank you very much for coming. I uh, really enjoyed uh, running through MKL4. We should totally do more of these. And watch out for awesome updates soon, very soon. Big changes coming to Forex Boat. You can't imagine. How much work we're doing on on the website, on the design, on the uh, you know like the development side of things. Very soon, we're gonna have a massive launch. You are all invited. Just look out for that. It's gonna happen within like a month or two, maximum. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I look forward to seeing you on the next webinar and generally on Forex Book.